So actually, I wanted to talk to you more about like uh, being an American artist right. doing a manga style because now that's kind of like a pretty normal thing. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, like even just uh, mainstream superhero comics right, right. do this pretty regularly now. Yeah. But you were like one of the first. Yeah, pretty much. I think. Uh, I mean, I think. I think Ben Dunn's Ninja High School came out when I was graduating, right. so it was around the same time. Mm -hmm. But I think before then, there had been a few things. Like, actually, Reggie Byers did a book called Shuriken that came out mm -hmm. when I was in school. I actually ran into it at a convention when I was still in school, and mm -hmm. that would have been my first job. Uh, I was uh, I was hoping to actually do something for Reggie's book back okay. then. But, uh -huh. but there, there were other pioneers kind of got it going on back then but I have to say that when I was in school my teachers were completely kind of taken aback like they had no idea what the hell was going on but when you uh, at the Cooper school oh yeah uh -huh. I mean they never heard never heard of such things but uh, but I I knew what I wanted to do so I didn't really care if my teachers were into it or not so and in fairness I mean it's not to say anything it's the school but it's like I learned more from like I immediately started cranking out Dirty Pair fan comics mm -hmm. because I was convinced the Dirty Pair would make a great American comic. So while I was in school, on top of my assignments, I did between, I think, rough, about 100 pages of, of Dirty Pair fan comics, which I actually learned more from, from that, you know, just from doing the yeah, comics than I did from any of my classes. Uh -huh. There's no shame on the classes, but at, at that age, you know, when you're kind of young and flexible and have great degree of neuroplasticity like you can really kind of turn things you can really kind of pick things up in a hurry and that's very much what I learned just from doing the job I love that so. neuroplasticity I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually use that next time I love that I don't want to play that up too much right, I, right. I don't want to because a lot of people freak out like you know like I haven't gotten to this by age 18 or I haven't you know or or right. much later in life like I've actually managed to improve as an artist fairly considerably in the last couple of years just from life drawing right. and I'm pretty old and do not have the same degree of neuroplasticity but you can still improve right. when you're old so yeah, yeah. don't don't give up folks so right. did you get any like I mean you mentioned like that they didn't understand it necessarily at the Kubert school but yeah. like also like oh well first of all in terms of your teachers but also in terms of fans we initially mm. introduced your style in right. the dirty pair like was there pushback at all like uh, was there just sort of like you I know guess, like you're an American doing this how dare you type of thing or there was some on that but really not that much because mm -hmm. it was so it was so kind of new yeah right, but right. actually early on there there actually were not just dirty pair but I mean uh, their actual I think Golf Force and Project ACO actually had oh, yeah. kind of American interpretations oh, yeah. of them done too. Oh, yeah. So, but it, but yeah, I mean there was some fe feedback, but it wasn't too bad just because there was kind of uh, it, there was so little manga available mm -hmm. at, at that time that, that people kind of people were a lot more flexible that kind of thing. There was there was wasn't a lot of p uh, purists mm -hmm. just just because it it was it was so new and so unavailable to most people that right. people would kind of would kind of deal with whatever they could they could get I, I went straight to I, I basically decided that the, getting the rights to the dirty pair would be the thing to do mm -hmm. even though I had no connections whatsoever yeah, right, right. and and I remember Joe Kubert who he liked in Joe Kubert enjoyed my stuff but it still he, he, he would always kind of rub his beard in the classic Joe Kubert fashion so I told Joe my plans to try to you know, try to get a connection to Japan and get the rights mm -hmm. to the dirty pair and, and Joe has said uh, Adam that will never happen mm -hmm. in a million years. And, and the thing is, he's right. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely correct yeah. as a grown-up uh, to hear that, but but by sort of insane coincidence, yeah, one of my classmates knew the writer Jim Hudnell, who I actually worked with briefly, and Jim Hudnell in turn uh, uh, knew, uh, knew Torrin Smith, mm -hmm. the head of Studio Proteus, the, trans the newly formed translation company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got in contact with Torin and worked up a portfolio of Dirty Pair artwork. And he, Torin, just happened to have the contacts to actually, you know, make a pitch to get the rights to do an American version of the Dirty Pair. And it did work out, but right. it shouldn't have worked out. Right, that that yeah, was yeah. an insane series of coincidences, particularly before the internet, right. where th these are the kind of co contacts were incredibly unlikely, yeah. but, but it actually happened. So. And that's actually interesting. I mean, I guess technically Joe was right. It would never happen in a million years. So yeah. like, it's going to it's gonna have to take another million years for something Pretty like much. that to happen. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the time, I was... At the time, I was like, how dare, how dare Joe say that to me? But he was absolutely right. There was no <laughs> way that should have happened. But you used up the first one million years, so now <laughs> you got to wait. So actually, uh, talking about the actual creator of Dirty Pair, mm -hmm. like, what was his reaction to that? Because I've read some things that like, uh, the people the people that represented him were kind of like, right. no way. But like, ultimately, you broke through. Like, what was his reaction to seeing those comics? Uh, I don't... 
I mean, I've I've never I've never heard that much about it because there, basically there's there's been so many different variations of the dirty mm -hmm. pair mm -hmm. that uh, I think he takes it all in stride. Right, yeah, I yeah, mean, because because the the various anime dirty pairs got increasingly kind of far afield from from uh, Takachi's yeah, original novels. Right, I mean, yeah. you got the you know first first the I mean they appeared fairly fairly faithfully in their first appearance in a on a drive-in movie screen in the in the anime Crusher Joe. That's the first appearance of the oh, Dirty really? Pair. They're okay. actually fictional characters on a on a uh, screen on a movie screen in the background of, of that book, huh. which okay. is actually also based on a Takashio novel, mm -hmm. the Crusher Joe series. And then uh, then then it went to the the TV series spawned out of that. Then there were videos, then the Dirty Pair Flash, which is a completely new take on it yeah, came out right, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So there's been enough variations. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was any big deal. So like so how did you had, like had you like you hadn't had much exposure to manga before, but like mm. what were your like the, like the Star Blazers like the earliest thing that you like came across? Or? Well, yeah, well the earliest anime experience, like I said, was uh, Urusei Atsura, right. the anime version, which uh, like Oshi Mamoru and and others were working on that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was it was it was some pretty pretty trippy stuff actually. And then and then uh, and of course uh, Miyazaki, uh, Naushika had had been out for a few years by that point, mm -hmm. so I got into the first few Miyazaki movies, and they they were. They yeah. were kind of quite the experience. Right, that's so. a good gateway for a lot of people, like clearly. So oh, I yeah. totally understand that. Definitely. You mentioned Torin Smith earlier, mm -hmm. and like he was the co-writer with you for quite a while, like at least starting off, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, er, the, the uh, yeah, er, er, kind of early on, I was uh, I was lacking confidence, so mm -hmm. so I I we were, I worked up a I worked up a synopsis for our first miniseries, and we sort of we sort of broke it down Marvel style, okay. and. Uh, like the the Marvel way, the yeah, initially. Uh, so, right, to, right. You know, so so when Torn did a loose Marvel style script based mm -hmm. off my breakdown for the first miniseries, yeah. and we sort of kind of divided up from there. I do roughs and dialogue, and then we kind of bat it back and forth on the first series, mm -hmm. and then gradually, gradually I had picked up confidence. So I just took over doing everything myself right. by the end. But so I mean, it really was a, like a confidence thing, like it oh wasn't yeah, like, okay, purely, right, right. yeah, because I'd I had I'd had no. No published stuff before Dirty Pair. I mean, it was it was it was it was really going from zero to sixty. Talk about Marvel Mangaverse. How did you get involved in that? Well, it was like I know Ben Dunn was right. at the at the top. He was like kind of like curating the whole thing. Yeah, I guess? pretty much. Right. Yeah, because I I I have a, I have a whole bunch of friends at Antarctic Press that uh, that work there. Like, in fact, my uh, my friend Joe White, who is, works at AP, is he did the, uh, the Star Wars manga covers with me, oh, yeah. uh, which which we did for because Dark Horse put out a a, a, a series of uh, reprinted as a, and translated a bunch of manga adapting the original trilogy, and we did uh, covers for that. But uh, so I, was, I I knew the, I knew the guys at AP quite well when they were pitching the Marvel Mangaverse thing. So they're like, "Hey, you want to do one?" I was like, "Okay." So I ended up doing a Fantastic Four that was a, an a rather overt reference to Evangelion, like, like if you if you know what to look for, it's incredibly obvious. But, but uh, I really had, and uh, Karan Grant was the artist on that. I love Karan stuff, and he ended up doing a three issue Fantastic Four story uh, called the Ever Loving Blue Eyed End of the World, that, <laughs> a kind of apocalyptic story with Ben Grimm spawning, or Ben Grimm's shell starts spawning runaway things. It's a whole. I gotta check that out. That actually sounds pretty gnarly. I love yeah, that. I think it's like <laughs> fifty-seven through fifty-nine, or oh, okay. 50, somewhere in there. Huh. So, okay. I think it's just before Wade and Rhea Ringo came on. Okay, gotcha. Maybe. Right, right, so, right. Okay. So then, like, and so these pulled you into the Marvel Mangaverse overall, mm -hmm. and like you did a couple of stories in that, in that work. Uh, yeah, that I, just, I just did the one, and that was it. Uh -huh, so. right. oh, okay, you just did the one. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Uh, what about the? Uh, uh, you talked about Star Wars earlier, right? Like, first of all, I'm gonna make you decide right now. Right. New Hope. Or Empire Strikes Back, or Return of the Jedi. Which one was your favorite to like adapt? Well, uh, oh, to adapt? Yeah, but also, which one is your favorite? Well, uh, I probably would still have to say A New Hope, just for once again the the degree of impact and yeah. kind of change on my life. Even though I I think M M Empire is the better it's the better film, but mm -hmm. but Star Wars had it's had such a sort of impact on me that I would probably have to give the nod to A New Hope, barely, mm -hmm. but. But in terms of the, in terms of the covers, actually, mm -hmm. I, we, you know, we did we did four covers for each adaptation, mm -hmm. and like in, in the in the first bunch, I actually drew like Tie Fighters and uh, uh, Tie Fighters and X Wings by hand, mm -hmm. and they are extraordinarily difficult to I draw. It, you yeah. don't you don't think they are, but right. the the nose of the X Wing is a nightmare yeah. because when you're drawing it coming towards you, it's increasing in perspective, but it's also shrinking, or because the the nose tapers. Oh, okay. But but it's, and the, and Tie Fighters are, those wings are crazy. So, 
However, I finally wised up, and why Empire has the much better has the much better covers from us because my, my friend Joe White, who paint who did all the painting and color on it, turns out he is a thousand times better at doing Star Wars vehicles than I am. So I passed off all the vehicles to him, and and the, and the Empire Empire and Return covers look fantastic because I just do the characters, and Joe does all the all the, all the real heavy lifting. It's okay. D-list laughing stock in a really embarrassing costume to genuine badass, mm -hmm. still in an embarrassing costume. <laughs> but 